welcome back. It's Christine again with The Artist Pod, and today we're going to be talking about the ethics of running an online business. As artists, we're a small business, and whether we're selling our art on canvases or t-shirts, the principles are still the same. I think ethics are always a good thing to discuss so that we can make better decisions and make sure we're being open, welcoming, and friendly to everyone, and not just our customers, but to other business owners as well. So let's get arty. So the first point is don't pretend to be something you're not, right? Don't pretend to be black, Asian, Hispanic, Native American, LGBTQ, etc. if you're not part of those communities. You're welcome to make art celebrating those cultures, but make it clear that you're an ally and not a member of that group. And even if you're not specifically using the words, I'm a black business owner, you may still be using wording that makes people think that you are part of that group. For instance, referring to our, our people, our culture, that would make anybody think that you belong to the group in question. So don't do that. That stealing money from those communities and causes very real hurt. You know, very often we're told not to bring up topics like racism or bigotry because it makes people uncomfortable. And if we do, we're the ones portrayed as the bad guy. But staying silent only helps the people who are perpetuating the racism or the bigotry and never the people that are suffering as a result. I think it's always important to allow these discussions to happen and be open to changing if and when you cross a line. Either way, pretending to be something you're not is racist and it's not ethical. Now another issue along this same line is pretending to support something you don't. For instance, as a member of the LGBTQ community, I find it particularly frustrating when a company says they support us in June for Pride Month and there's rainbows everywhere, only to find out that that company is then donating to anti-LGBTQ organizations. And I'm not talking about Chick-fil-A. Their hate is hurtful, but they're honest about it. And while I don't respect their hate, I do respect their honesty. That lets me make an informed decision. I won't be eating at Chick-fil-A, even though the taste of hate tastes really good. Maybe that's just the pickle juice. But sometimes it surprises me and there's extra anger. You know, why would they pretend to support us only to be stabbing us in the back? So don't do that. Don't pretend to support a group you don't and don't pretend to be someone you're not. Be honest, be open, be transparent. Let your customers make the decision to buy from you based on who you are, not who you're pretending to be. Chasing trends is great, but being black, Asian, Hispanic, um, Native American, LGBTQ, is not a trend. We're not a niche. We're people. And we may be people in your target audience, but we ourselves are not your product. So copyright and trademark infringement is another topic to bring up, and it happens all the time, unfortunately. I'm going to talk about them separately since I think there's already a lot of confusion between the two, and I'm going to talk about copyright first. So anytime you do any creative work, whether that's a painting, digital art, um, a sketch, writing a book, writing a song, writing a script for a movie, uh, working on a TV show, doing photography, whatever that is, any creative work, it's automatically protected by copyright. So taking and using someone else's character from a TV show, um, painting a design someone's already done, you know, quote from a, a song referring to an artist, all of those things is stealing and it's illegal. So it might be cool to do a drawing of Baby Yoda, but the moment you go to sell that drawing, you're stealing and you're stealing money from the original creator. Now, you can do fan art. Um, that's totally fine. It's not illegal. Where it gets, um, where it becomes illegal is once you go to sell it. That's where you get into the stealing phase. So you can create it if you really love Baby Yoda, make tons of Baby Yoda, just never sell them. Um, I think there's a misconception that if you create the artwork that it's yours, and that's not true. If you create the artwork based on one of the things I listed above or any creative work from somebody else, then it belongs to the original creator. And it doesn't matter that you spent five weeks making the best Baby Yoda in your life, it belongs to Disney and to Star Wars. And if you go to sell it, you're stealing money from them. So to reiterate on that, you know, don't sell art that is based on TV shows, movies, music, books, photography, someone else's art, um, etc. I know I see it a lot at a lot of conventions in the artist alley, like anime conventions or sci-fi conventions where artists are doing that, but they're stealing. Um, all of them are, are stealing unless they have a licensing deal, which I'll talk about in just a minute. And that's illegal. 
you can't profit off of someone else's idea. Um, you didn't put the work in to create it, to build it up, uh, to increase its popularity, to advertise for it, to do the original design, to write the script or the movie. You didn't put that work in, so you, didn't, you don't get to take money from the people or person who did. Now, there are exceptions to this. Um, parody is one of them. But before you, you go doing parodies, I, I you know, recommend sort of looking up the law and being very familiar with it. Parody is a very, very thin, shaky ground. Um, licensing is another way that you can go about it. You can, um, in effect, contact a company and get a licensing agreement, but that's hard to do and it's not cheap. I do know of at least one artist who does that, but it is decided on a company by company basis. So if that is something you wanna do, contact the companies directly. At the end of the day, if you are creating fan art or you know, copying another artist's work, you're stealing. So just be honest, make your own art from your own ideas and you'll be okay. So copyright doesn't extend to phrases. That only covers creative work. Now it does extend to phrases that come from a creative work. So, you know, quotes from a movie or a book, etc., would fall under copyright. But otherwise, it would potentially fall under trademark. If you're talking about a phrase, it would be trademarked. Unlike copyright, with trademark, you do need a registration to enforce it. Um, in theory, trademark should only be approved if it's part of your brand. A lot of people do file for and get approved for frivolous trademarks, where they see a phrase, copy it, and then trademark it to keep other people from using that same phrase. It's an abuse of the system, but it does happen anyway. Either way, there is a database to look up any trademark, um, any active trademark to see if you're in the clear with a phrase that you've come up with. So if you do come up with sort of a catchy phrase, I'd recommend checking the trademark database. And then I'd also recommend Googling it just to make sure it doesn't come from a creative work. Using uh, trademark phrases will get you in the same trouble um, that copyright will. I think a lot of people get frustrated with both copyright and trademark when they see other people getting away with it and point to them as an example as to why it's okay. But trust me, it's not okay. The only reason they're currently doing it is they haven't been caught yet. Once they do get caught, they are risking being kicked off of whatever platform they're on and being sued. Anything worth doing is worth doing right, and just like the first topic, you know, this is stealing. So I don't see this come up as much, but I do see it happen occasionally, and that's bullying the competition. You know, sometimes sellers are trying to break into a niche, and they think that the best way to do that is to bring down the people in their competition. Um, and, you know, that's it's unethical. It's not a good thing to do. And there's multiple ways and multiple um, varieties of ways I've seen people try to do this. So I'm going to quickly touch on a lot of these. At the end of the day, though, you know, if your designs and your business practices are good, you don't need to bully someone. You're going to get traction. Um, but some of the examples, for instance, I've heard of people filing uh, frivolous copyright claims against other sellers that have no basis. I know of at least one person who is attempting to sue a seller on Etsy who issued a frivolous copyright claim against him. And what Etsy does in those cases is they remove the listing until you know, you file a counterclaim, which as a side note, you can file a counterclaim to get your listing back up. You're basically saying that they, it's, they don't have a basis for it, but if you're taking someone else's art, you should not file a counterclaim. You were stealing and you need to take that hit and move on. If you file a counterclaim, you may be sued and you should be sued. Um, so don't do that. Um, but, you know, this seller issued this sort of frivolous copyright claim against him. Etsy took his listing down and it's Q4. You're talking about a lot of traction and traffic. So he's attempting to sue the person who did it. So, you know, don't make fraudulent copyright claims. The same is true with trademark claims. Don't make fraudulent or frivolous trademark claims. To enforce a trademark, you have to have a live and active registered trademark. Pending trademark does not cover it. You cannot issue takedowns for a trademark that's pending. There's actually an organization um, that does monitor frivolous trademarks being issued and they write letters of protest. So you have to spend money to um, get a trademark issued. And if someone files a letter of protest against you and the, the trademark office accepts it, you're out that money and you don't have your trademark. So you can't start forcing people off just because you want to trademark it or because there's a pending trademark application. Unless it's live and active, it's no good. It is currently not valid. Now, if you yourself want to file for a trademark, make sure it's your brand. This is, 
when you're filing for a trademark, it's, it's supposed to be your brand name, things like that, not for just phrases you come up with. So don't bully others off for having a phrase that you have a pending application for or because you want to use that phrase too and you think there's too many, don't bully people in that way. Don't try to start issuing these trademark takedowns when one doesn't exist. And then, you know, don't leave false product reviews. Don't spam click on their ads to drive costs up. Basically, stay in your own lane. Um, Worry about you and your products and don't try to destroy someone else. Of course, if that someone else is violating a trademark that that you own or you know they've stolen your artwork they're violating copyright or they're pretending to be something they're not by all means issue takedowns you know let people know but outside of those things don't do it because you're worried about the competition you know it's unethical And the last point I want to make is making sure you're representing your products accurately. Um, Don't say you create original paintings and what you're actually sending them are photographs. Don't show them photos of your products as Bella Canvas shirts and what you're actually sending them is Gildan. You know, make sure your product photos and your descriptions accurately represent what the item is. Um, I think we've all seen or heard about or been victims of fraudulent sellers in various places. People who claim they have this cool product and what customers actually receive is a far cry from what their photos or descriptions said that it was. I know I saw a bunch of ads over um, the, the summer and fall this year of this little dog plushie on Facebook. And they, they popped up under multiple names. They had a video that showed this, this dog running around. And in the description, they said that this was a plushie that had some advanced computer AI that would follow you around and basically act like a real puppy. But if you did some investigating and read the Facebook comments, there were a ton of people that were complaining that what they actually received was just a plushie. The video was of someone's little tiny toy dog, um, or you know, toy husky toy. I don't I don't know what you call it. It was basically this little cute fluffy dog, but the video was of an actual dog and not of a toy, right? Don't do that. That's absolutely blatantly scamming people and is fraud and is obviously unethical. Don't scam people for a quick buck. You know, as online sellers, it takes a while to build up a brand. It takes years, except in rare cases. Most of the time it takes years. I've been at it for years. This isn't a get rich quick scheme. It's a long game if you want to build up a brand. Um, So if you're willing to keep working at it, even when it's not paying off, and build an ethical brand, you'll eventually get traction in your business. Maybe it'll take five years of hard work with absolutely no reward. But if you stick with it, your future self will thank you. Your current self, not as much, but your future self will thank you. But you know, do it honestly. Um, Be open, be transparent, and not just to your customers, but to other business owners. We should work to create a more welcoming, open, and friendly place for all entrepreneurs where people can feel safe and respected instead of bullied and torn down. All right, so that is um, a few points of how I think you can build an ethical business. I hope that's helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.